Hi, and welcome to this introduction to Molotok, the new free compressor plugin from Tokyo Dawn Labs. And its bigger brother, Molot Gentleman's Edition. Both use the same compression algorithms and provide the same basic sound, dripping with character. This is the kind of compressor you reach for when you want to add something to the sound, like a rich bloom for sustained notes, or pumping and breathing. You can add energy and excitement, or extra attack. You can even add a lovely growl to the bass. Let's start with the smaller Molotov. This is in no way just a crippled demo of its bigger brother. In fact, Molotov provides all the essential control over attack and release, a fully variable ratio, a tunable high-pass filter for the sidechain, and even a knee control that allows you to precisely tune the onset of compression. And of course, you can use the dry mix parameter for easy parallel compression. Up at the top, we find AB switching to easily compare two different settings, a mono mode for mono sources, and a quality setting which provides a more lightweight economy mode in case your processor can't keep up, or a zero latency setting in case you want to monitor the output while tracking live. I'm going to assume you're all familiar with the standard compressor controls, so let's start with the mysterious knob in between attack and release, labelled Alpha, Beta and Sigma, which changes many different parameters behind the scenes to provide a range of different compressor styles. This is probably easiest to demonstrate on drums. I'll start with default settings, except the knee, which I'll set to its hardest to make the compression easier to hear. Then I'll dial in a lot of compression. Notice that the input levels are helpfully displayed around the threshold knob, so it's easy to judge where to set it. And let's compensate with some makeup gain. If I toggle bypass, you can hopefully hear that the drums are already more focused and hitting harder. But let's try tuning the attack. At its fastest setting, the compression acts almost instantly and smashes off the initial transients. Let's increase the attack gradually. And notice that the initial transients start to squeeze past the compressor. Halfway up, we get a very snappy attack. which, if we keep going, turns into a punchy attack. And finally just thumps. Notice how well calibrated this control is, incidentally. Most of its range is dedicated to the fastest settings over which we need most control. And it's super easy to dial in the type of attack you want. Okay, let's go back to the fastest setting and try switching to the Sigma style. And notice the difference in the initial transient, which is passing through almost unaffected, despite the attack setting. This is particularly noticeable on the kick in this example. Listen to the initial attack of the kick as I switch between alpha and sigma modes. But it also affects the snare, especially when it hits with the clap as well. Notice how soft this sounds in alpha mode with the fastest attack. Compared to sigma mode. Of course, you can also tune the attack of sigma mode. You can create really exaggerated attack transients if you want which you could then blend in more subtly with the dry mix parameter.
While the Alpha style has an aggressively fast attack behavior, the Sigma style attack could perhaps be described as aggressively slow. The knee control can also be useful here. Softer knee settings mean a more gradual onset of compression, as you would expect. But harder knee settings above 0.5 start to introduce a little positive bump before the gain starts to dip. If you set the threshold so that transients bounce around the knee, you can exploit this knee shape to add a further punchy character. The Alpha and Sigma styles also have a very different release behavior. Listen to the bass when I set a really fast release time with the Alpha style. Once again, I can tune that growling distortion really easily by tuning the release control. And now notice how much cleaner and less distorted it sounds with the Sigma style. We can do the same thing with the larger Molot plugin. But this time the parameter is labeled differently. There's no beta style in the middle. And unlike Molotok, it's a continuous parameter and not stepped. In fact, this parameter is much more focused and specific than the knob in Molotok. It just controls the attack and release behavior and program dependency and allows us to morph between the Alpha and Sigma styles. To match the sound of Molotok exactly, we would also need to make sure that feedback is turned off and relaxed turned on and saturate is enabled above, as we now have separate control over these options. With feedback turned off, we get feed forward compression, which tends to grab hold of transients and discipline them firmly. This is a great choice for adding snap or punch to drums, or aggressive attitude to a vocal. Sometimes feed forward compression is too aggressive, however, with a tendency to overreact and choke transients. If you switch to feedback mode, the compressor listens to its output instead of its input, resulting in more complex behavior that's sometimes described as musical. It can still shape transients with a fast attack. The famous 1176 is a feedback design, so you can still get plenty of attitude. But transients aren't choked so much and don't trigger such obvious ducking. One other difference that's usually not apparent to the user is that feedback compression naturally has a lower ratio than feed forward. You can understand this intuitively by remembering that the compressor is listening to a signal that's already compressed with reduced dynamic range. So the compressor reacts less than an otherwise identical feed forward design. Any properly designed compressor that gives you a choice between the two topologies will compensate behind the scenes. When you switch to feedback mode, Molot automatically changes to use a much more extreme internal transfer curve, so that the actual compression ratio remains whatever is shown on the knob. But Molot also gives you the option to invert this and deliberately use the wrong internal transfer curve. In practice, this means that if you're in feedback mode, pressing this button will give you super gentle ratios that might work well in a mastering context. Even with the ratio knob turned fully up, the actual compression ratio is still only about two to one. While conversely, if you're in feed forward mode, this button will give you brutally extreme over compression, where signals over the threshold actually start to get quieter instead of just being limited to the threshold. Now a ratio setting of two to one is already a limiter and anything above that will start ducking the peaks. we can get more complex behavior by enabling dual stage below. This is a bit like using two compressors in parallel and splitting the compression between the two. The result can be much more natural and transparent than a single compressor stage. And having two sets of attack and release controls gives us more options. Combining a fast release from one stage with a much slower release from another gives a highly program dependent type of compression that reacts quickly to short transients, but much more slowly and gently to slower dynamic changes.
Notice the release knob has a ring of dots around it to indicate the overall combined release time. We get even more control over the attack, as we also have an attack mix control. You can set a fast main attack time, plus a slower secondary attack time, then blend these together using the attack mix parameter. Again, notice the inner ring of dots around the main attack knob reflects the secondary attack and attack mix settings to give you an idea of where your overall attack time sits. With suitable settings for the dual stage parameters, feedback enabled, and the Alpha Sigma weighting knob set halfway up, we've matched the beta style in Molotov. This is great for more complex materials such as buses or full mixes. In that case, you might want to try a lower ratio setting of 2 to 1 or less, and dig down deep into the mix with a lower threshold. And you might also find the sidechain high pass filter useful to stop the compressor reacting too much to the low bass frequencies. Back in Molot, we find an extra option here labeled SC phase, which applies phase rotation to just the sidechain. The effect on the sound can sometimes be quite subtle. In this case, I'm using Sigma weighting and relaxed mode for a relatively clean release. When I rotate the sidechain phase, the attack and release times become slightly slower for the low frequencies. Notice how the kick drum thumps a little more when I turn this on. With faster, dirtier release settings, the effect is more dramatic. Let's try alpha timings. And I'll also turn off relaxed mode, which changes the program dependency of the release stage. Now short transients are compressed with faster release times, which gives us a more in-your-face sound with more distortion. Enabling phase rotation now gives us extra grit and attitude. And we can tune that extra character by adjusting the turnover frequency. If you want this kind of setting in Molotov, set the center knob to 0.2. This will also turn off the relaxed release and enable phase rotation for the sidechain. However, if you set it to 0.3 instead, the sound changes a lot and gets much cleaner. This is equivalent to setting the weighting to 0.3 in Molot, but it also turns off phase rotation and enables dual stage attack and release. Herein lies the key difference between the two plugins. Molot allows you to adjust every detail of the compression, but Molotok frees you from having to worry about all those tweaky parameters when you can just try out different styles and choose one by ear. I can imagine many Molot owners nevertheless reaching for Molotok on occasion to just dial in some squash with the minimum of fuss. If you start with Molotok, but then need to tweak parameters that are only available in Molot, simply copy a preset to your clipboard and paste it into Molot instead, which will interpret that preset and set all the individual parameters accordingly. As with all Tokyo Dawn plugins, presets are actually saved as human-readable text, so you could paste your preset into a social media post or an email if you need to share it. Molot does have a couple of options that aren't in Molotok at all, however. Standard fare for Gentleman's Edition Dynamics plugins are the options to automatically set the output gain to match the loudness of the input. And a bypass button that automatically adjusts the loudness of the dry signal to match that of the processed signal, making it much easier to judge your settings properly. Molot also allows you to disable stereo linking, or to apply selective stereo linking for content below the specified turnover frequency. You can use the delta function if you want to listen to the difference between compressed and uncompressed signals, which can make it easier to hear the difference that stereo linking makes. For a different approach to stereo signals, try switching to summon difference mode. Now the signal is matrixed into mid and side channels before the compression, then back to left and right afterwards. 
and we can adjust the relative threshold and gain for just the side channel. If I increase the width threshold, I can reduce the compression of the different signal, which can sometimes result in a more natural, open sound. But if I turn it down instead, I can compress the sides much harder, then compensate with makeup gain to create an artificially hyped and consistent sense of width. Of course, even if you just leave the relative threshold at unity, you can still use the difference gain as a simple stereo width control. If you want a grittier, harder edge to the sound, try turning on lo-fi mode. This drops the signal path to 12 bits of resolution and the gain reduction signal to just 8 bits, resulting in quantization distortion and extra harmonics. Or you can have a different type of colour via the mid-EQ parameter. This adds opposing EQ cuts and boosts in critical EQ bands and can help to add presence or airiness or reduce harshness. You get this shape when you turn it up and this shape when you turn it down. But the idea is not to worry too much about the specific frequencies you're affecting and just turn the knob till your ears are happy. Notice, however, that we're getting very slightly different responses for the left and right channel. These differences are random and meant to emulate the slight differences found in analogue gear, which can sometimes help to create a more interesting stereo image and greater sense of depth. If you double-click the logo at the top right, you can switch to a new random seed and a different set of subtle variations between left and right. You can also set the EQ to be dynamic. Now the EQ is flat when the compressor isn't working then reaches full strength when the compressor reaches 6 dB of gain reduction. This can help to reduce harshness for loud notes or create a perception of greater clarity. Molot also allows you to adjust the amount of saturation when this is enabled without affecting the overall gain. And like the EQ, you can link this to the compressor gain reduction so that saturation is applied dynamically and more harmonics are added when the compressor is working harder. Finally, a secret Easter egg feature that's not even covered in the manual. Hold Alt and click the sidechain phase button to switch the envelope follower at the heart of the design from a vintage style RMS detector to a raw Hilbert detector instead. This is a more precise, mathematically correct approach to envelope following. In practice, it means less distortion for the low frequencies and a crisper, less rounded approach to transients. Before I go, let's take a moment to appreciate the beauty of the interface. This uses the modern, clean style of all Tokyo Dawn plugins but nevertheless evokes the vintage vibe of the compression through colour choice and the meter style. The gain reduction meter can be switched to show total gain if you prefer. This includes the makeup gain, which rotates the scale in a satisfying manner. You can change the interface size to suit your display, and you can even switch all the labels to Russian if you want. Actually, the controls are laid out logically and clearly enough that this is still perfectly workable, even for an English monoglot such as myself. As usual, you can turn on help hints to get a brief description of each parameter when you hover over it. Or you can open a detailed user manual via the help tab in the settings panel. That's all. Thanks for watching.